What's going on guys? My name is Ben. How are you guys doing today? And what I have for you today in this video is actually something a little bit different that I've been wanting to do, but I couldn't do it because I did not have an iPhone 4 with me. <laughs> but I felt that this is a really good video <laughs> to do because I want to show you guys how much Apple has improved over their iOS software updates. So before I get started, you guys are probably confused by the title that you read. Uh, for this video and I just want to give you guys some background information about what I'm talking about so Apple since the first original iPhone have been releasing on software updates for these iOS devices or iPhone OS devices that was known as that back in the day of the first generation iPhone before the iPhone 4 with iOS naming in their operating system naming abilities whatever they want to call it and as those software updates are released, they're supposed to fix some bugs, they're supposed to put new features into the iOS operating system, etc, etc, etc. Why am I even going over all of them? Because I don't know all of them. Now, there are some issues with these software updates, and that usually it holds into when you put the third generation of the operating system update on a certain device. For instance, the first generation iPhone you had iPhone OS 1.0 or somewhere around that back then. Then you had iPhone OS 2.0, which it wasn't too bad. And that was actually the, the very first Opera system that was running on the iPhone 3G. So the iPhone OS 2.0 is actually considered the first generation operating system for the iPhone 3G. But overall, in terms of the whole iOS generation updates, that's actually considered the second generation of iOS. And... It was running very very good on the iPhone 2G. You know, that that's what you would expect. If it runs great on the 3G, then on the first generation iPhone, uh, uh, I'm not pointing here at the first generation iPhone, this is iPhone 4, but on the first generation iPhone, it runs great. And then, the iPhone 3G got the second update to itself, which is known as iPhone OS 3.0, all right? And that's when the bad started to happen. When you updated the uh, first generation iPhone to iPhone OS 3.0, the thing has collapsed itself. Meaning, it's slow, it's sluggish, it's very laggy. It basically just hurt itself with that iPhone OS 3.0 update. Same goes for the first generation iPod Touch. iPhone OS 1.0, 2.0 worked fine on it. Now 3.0 has made the iPod Touch first generation very slow. So, what... The point I'm trying to make here is that as software updates go on by Apple, there are going to be times where these devices will slow down and lag because of those software updates. And the iPhone 3G, the same story applied when it was updated to iOS 4.0. That's the third, that's the fourth generation operating system of iOS overall, but in terms of just the 3G, iOS 4.0 is the third generation of iOS that was running on the iPhone 3G itself, just the 3G. The first generation of the iOS operating system for the iPhone 4 was iOS 4. So the iPhone 3G was very slow and sluggish and it was only updated all the way to iOS 4.2.1. And it couldn't go any further than that. And because you couldn't go any further than that, you weren't able to download any new applications uh, that are being currently released in the modern days, uh, such as like, for instance, I have a app right here, Talking Ginger. Uh, I can't download it on here. I can't even download Google Chrome on the 3G. Another application that I can't download on the 3G is Subway Surfers, which is a really good game. Uh, you know, these new applications that are being released for the newer devices can't support the old devices because uh, they're running outdated software and they can't go past that outdated software. However, I think that you know, this really ended with the iPhone 3GS running iOS 5.0. And here's why, because when the iPhone 3GS uh, was given iOS 5.0, I immediately thought oh, iOS 5 is gonna uh, slow down the iPhone 3GS, and I've actually read forms where it actually slowed down, but then someone told me that, what are you talking about, the iPhone 3GS runs beautifully with iOS 5. It runs fairly quick. Uh, and it may be a little bit sluggish, but it's just very minor. And that's what I've experienced with the iPhone 4, and I'm so pleased about that. So I'm like, oh, okay. And then now the iPhone 4 I have right here is running iOS 6.0.1. I am very pleased with the performance of the iPhone 4. 
running iOS 6. And here's why, because I thought that it would slow down, it would lag, but in terms of the performance, I feel like this runs the same as if, if this person got it right out of the box. Uh, it may not run perfect, I mean, there are some um, slowdowns and luggishness, but it, it's just very minor, like you only see that once in a while. For example, what I want to do in this video right now is actually give you guys a demonstration. So let's first start off with the 3G. So I'm just going to go into my uh, settings. Okay. And as you can see, as I'm scrolling down, it's a little laggy. It's not very smooth. And when you go into general and you try to scroll down, as you can see, it, it's a little laggy. It's not that bad, but the, 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 you, you see, I can't even scroll uh, because it's still loading up. Now, let's do it on the iPhone 4 running iOS 6. As you can see, very smooth. No problems whatsoever. Uh, I can load up uh, general, about, and I can still scroll down. I can scroll immediately. And the, and the, the worst part is that the iPhone 3G is running iOS 4. And by the way, guys, just so you know, this iPhone is jailbroken, so that's why I have it in safe mode, so I can shut down all the jailbreak tweaks you know, just to give you guys a proper demonstration. However, please note, these accurates are not that... Uh, they're not that accurate. Uh, I mean, the results uh, are almost as accurate as they can, but if it's non-jailbroken, you, know, you should get proper results. So, with the iPhone 3G, it slows down... Uh, a, a lot like I think that you shouldn't update to iOS 4 with the iPhone 3G but at the same time you have to so you can get at least somewhat most of the applications that you can download and it's worse when you're playing some of the games like I mean the games aren't that bad like for example pipe roll I can play pipe roll uh, just fine but sometimes it will lag up and I can't you know, even move the pipes around and all that and when I'm playing Asphalt 5 uh, you know, it, it's a little slow down and sluggish, and but with the iPhone 4, I have no problems whatsoever playing those games. All right, and it's even worse when you're using uh, Mobile Safari, for example. Mobile Safari, whenever you want to load up a web page, and sometimes when you load up the desktop version, it it slows down a lot. So why don't we just do something like, uh, what do I want to do? Let's just do Apple, for example, because they got some uh, Flash-based content on there. And we'll load it up on the iPhone 4 while we wait for this 3G to load up because the 3G is very slow. But this isn't a speed test or anything. I just want to show you guys how laggy it is. Ah, and look at that. I even loaded the iPhone 4 late, and it's... This isn't a speed test comparison. All right, so it's loading, and I, I can scroll down very easily. You do get that checkerboard pattern, but that doesn't bother me a lot. And see, I'm pinching into Zoom. I can't even pinch into Zoom, even while it's still loading. But sometimes, even when it's already done loading, I can't even pinch into Zoom. Maybe I just couldn't do it on the flash page. No, I can. How about on the iPhone 4? Very smooth. I can pinch in no problem whatsoever, and it is still very buttery smooth as some people would like to call it and see it's loaded up I can't even scroll down and, and, and here's another thing with the uh, iPhone 3G running on this software that is making it very slow it'll constantly constantly disconnect you from your uh, Wi-Fi alright and when it disconnects from your Wi-Fi, then you have to type in a password again and, and all that crap, which I just find very annoying. Um, on the iPhone 4 here, it doesn't do that very often, but whenever it disconnects, it always connects itself back. Like, I don't have to keep punching in the password. It doesn't give me a pop-up. Oh, okay, you incorrect password. You need to type it in again. No, it does not do that. The iPhone 3G does that. And it's running on outdated software, and it's very slow and sluggish. So, what's my conclusion to this video right here? My conclusion is that I think real Apple has really stepped uh, up their game and they really fixed themselves in terms of the iOS software update because here's the thing. I literally 
thought that I was going to get the same experience on the iPhone 4 if I were to get this iPhone 4 running iOS 6. Now, you guys are telling me, I'll oh, just stay on iOS 5. Well, here's the thing. I got the phone, and it already was on iOS 6, so I can't downgrade it, and I'm not going to, because if I downgrade, I won't be able to stay updated with all the apps that I want, and there could be new apps that I want to get, but it might not be able to work because it's running outdated software. So, overall, I think Apple has really stepped up their game with the iOS software updates, so the iPhone 3G, as slow as it is, forget the 3G, and if you still have an iPhone 4 and you don't want to get the iPhone 5 yet, you, you, you can still stick with your iPhone 4 if you want to, running iOS 6. But the question I have for Apple is, are can they keep the same performance on a two-year-old device with iOS 7 when iOS 7 comes out? Now, currently, this video is recorded in 2012. So, next year, 2013, this thing will be three years old. So... Uh, I just wonder, will Apple able to keep the same performance on a three-year-old device? Because uh, I've actually heard that the iPhone 3GS, since it was updated to iOS 6, I've heard that it had some sluggish and slowness problems, but they're not that bad. But it sounded like it was worse than, than it running iOS 5. So I was wondering if the iPhone 4 were to run iOS 7 next year in 2013, will it be able to keep up its performance that you saw right here? Uh, let me... Leave it down in the comments down below on what you think. And Apple, can you do it? I can't answer that question because uh, Apple needs to ask themselves that question. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next one.